My grandfather was the pastor of the church I grew up in, and then my grandmother was a church organist, and my mother was a choir director, and my father was the drummer and taught Sunday school. So I grew up around uh, Midwestern black church folk, and so I grew up listening to a lot of gospel music and listen to soul music. The, the history is what people are really uh, intrigued by. Mm -hmm. And so it appears as though music is kind of in uh, genetic predisposition for yeah, you. Yeah, I think everything people do is, is partly genetic, but a lot of it has to do with nurture. And I grew up in a house that nurtured music. And uh, we had a piano in the house, we had drums in the house. And in particular, your grandmother, I yes. understand, was very instrumental in yes. your Yes, so my, my grandmother, like I said, she was probably the most influential musician in my life teaching me how to play gospel music and a lot of my piano chops, I still play in some ways like an old black church lady. <laughs> <laughs> stylistically yes, speaking, of stylistically course. Stylistically speaking, I, I feel mm -hmm. like I, I still have a lot of her chops and, and her style. Can you even estimate how many songs you may have written? Oh man, it's hundreds at least, um, if of not course. into the thousands. Talking about collaborations is yeah. something that is very integral to your uh, career, collaborating with people, mm -hmm. is, would you agree? Yeah, it's been a huge part of my career. And I think collaborations, sometimes in the press, they talk about it as boldface name with another boldface mm -hmm. name. But as you know, there's a lot of collaborations that happen with people that aren't as famous, but are still integral to making sure it sounds great. Whether it's a great producer, great engineer, uh, great keyboardist, great guitarist, whatever it is. What I love about collaborating is you bring different perspectives and different influences into a room together and you never know what's going to happen. The time at the Sour House in Silver Lake. Yeah. yeah. If, I, if I may, <clears throat> we were one of the earliest um, kind of guys to kind of be in a East Hollywood kind yeah. of area, Silver Lake kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, we created this environment that we knew was going to just be a winner for people. Yeah. Um, we received it a notification that you wanted to work with us, and yeah. we, we all pushed hard to make it happen. Um, I told the fellas, I said, listen, John's about to come over. We're about to do this. <laughs> we need to have a piano in here. Yeah, and man, we had this massive piano. We got was, that for you, In the dude. living room. <laughs> that began the run of our, that kind of was the beginning of our rise as producers in yeah. and, and kind of the public eye because we had all this wonderful gear around us. Yeah. And, you know, when people would come over, they would see that we were, we were about this business. What I loved about <laughs> it was, um, that there were all these instruments in the room and, and people that could actually play them. And sometimes we get, in this business, I think uh, there's a lot of shortcuts to making music these days. And there's so many uh, technological ways to get around really knowing how to play an instrument. And it was cool uh, to kind of be in a throwback session where we were just really just playing. We really were. And uh, coming up with ideas. And we wrote still that a song that still goes down is one of my favorite songs I've written, uh, Maxine. And at the end of the song process, we were like, we should give her a name. Right. And uh, then we decided on Maxine. I couldn't figure out, I couldn't remember why we did, but it just had a nice ring to mm -hmm. it. And it felt kind of quaint in a way, because mm -hmm. not a lot of people named their kids Maxine during that era. And it turns out my grandmother's middle name is Maxine. <laughs> wow. And so she was so happy that I uh, named a character wow. after her.